Wow, long time no see. For me, it's been roughly 20 seconds. For everyone else, I don't know how long it's been. But, um, this is Olaf vs. Teemo. And the reason I've chosen this game specifically is because this is the most I have ever roamed as a top laner, well, maybe, maybe not as a top laner, but maybe just as Olaf top my entire life, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure this is the most I've ever roamed on all I've talked. So let's just set everything up. Uh, Fog of all blue. Uh, we have a really good level 1 because we have Olaf, Q Permaslow, Mundo, Q Permaslow. Uh, and then we also have Israel Q, which can like, it's just long range. And it's easy to scout shit. And it's spammable. And we have Zoe, uh, with potentially we have Zoe Bubble. Um, and then we also potentially have like Soraka Silence. So I'm pushing really hard for us to like be aggressive in this level one. Ezreal cues this bush. I really wish he didn't because if we all went into this bush together, we could have killed this Thrash. Or at the very least, we could have burnt this Thrash's flash, but um, yeah, whatever. It's yeah. like it, because our level 1 was so strong, we could have just like walked into this bush. What's Thresh gonna do? He flashes away and then he gets to like here. If you know, if we're all here, he suddenly sees us around the corner, he flashes away, he's already slowed by you know, window Olaf. He flashes to here, he's still slowed, we just flash after him and kill him. So we can ignite him if we need to. But oh well. People in solo queue don't always and like myself included, people in solo queue don't always see like what, what can be done, like what the team's power level really is. Uh, Olaf vs. Teemo, it's pretty... Well, pre-6 it's pretty straightforward, I think. It plays out just like most uh, ranged matchups do, um, or ranged matchups without sustain. But you just you just walk at him really hard, level 1. Um, I took a tower shot there, so like, you know, <laughs> be mindful of how far you're going. I went a little bit too far there. Um, but a top laner without, sorry, a ranged top laner without sustain, um, you know, just take aggressive trades early, you can use a double to heal up, just like I am here, on the wave, and by pushing the wave you make it so that the, sorry, by stacking the wave, I should be very clear about that, I'm not just pushing the wave, I am stacking the wave. It makes it very hard for Teemo to follow, and just before I talk about it, now I'm slightly more hydrated. Uh, it also makes it very... Uh, well, it makes it significantly riskier for the enemy jungle to gank you, so I just swap those around. So, thus begins my roaming adventures. I know the Warwick started bottom side, and I decide to say hello. This Teemo's wave is like super duper stacked. I burn his flash, I'm gonna see what else I can do here. I counter flash, and he's dead. And oh look, it's a Yasuo. I do enjoy a good Yasuo dying. So Yasuo dies too. And we have a jolly good time in the mid lane. Now that <laughs> both solo lanes are ahead. And there's just suddenly this Teemo who's also here as well. Zoe's about to do something a little bit too aggressive. She's about to get aggro. Yep. And then she's about to do it a second time. And whoop de doo she dies. So that wasn't really worth it in my opinion. <laughs> Team has been so hard denied. Um, the relative difference between like the top half of the map has now changed. Uh, and Warwick also got a kill onto Mundo because Mundo sort of overstayed. Um, so that's not ideal. The wave is stacking towards me. So yeah, it's in terms of me selfishly, it's 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 alright. Um, you know, I'm not gonna miss too much. But in terms of the top side of the map, we just took this huge, enormous advantage by killing Warwick and Yasuo and not dying. <laughs> and then we just threw it away by uh, Zoe trading for Teemo, which wasn't that great. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't that great. And then Mundo just dying just to get the Raptors. So, yeah, not ideal. But, whatever. Where am I? Oh, I'm here. Perfect. So yeah, I'm just still roaming. Because Teemo is refusing to push this wave at like maximum speed. I mean, he kind of is now, as you can see, he's like rotating his poison for maximum DPS. Um, but before that, he wasn't really... Like, he just didn't have the ability to do anything. I noticed that this this was burning, so I'm like, oh shit, Warwick's here. Side to side, yep, I'm just gonna kill this Warwick again. 
Uh, this wave is crashing on me, but if I can make this Warwick so far behind that like he bleeds out of his eyes, then this is totally worth it. And you can see right here, I get blinded, I hold my auto attacks. There's no reason to attack if you're blinded or if you can't, like if your target is like, has Jax E active or anything like that, I just hold it. Um, and then Olaf W, Olaf passive, you know, <laughs> pretty fucking strong. And I get to collect a couple of the minions uh, from this really stacked wave. And so the funny thing is that at this stage in the game, I'm level four and a half. Timo is actually nearly level five. Timo actually has an experience advantage, even though I'm four zero three. Um, and it reflects in my CS. I have fourteen CS. I mean, enemy bot lane's gone real bad. Enemy bot lane has nineteen CS between both of them. But uh, I have even less CS than that. So yeah, I've sacrificed a lot to make sure that Warwick is just having a bad time. And to make sure that like mid lane is having a bad time. And I've even made it so that Timo you saw he sort of shadowed me at the very start of my my evading adventures. Uh I don't know where Warwick is. I should talk about the vision back. At this stage I don't know no I'm there. If I can talk, I don't wanna know where Warwick is, so I don't wanna I basically just wanna clear this wave out in a recall because I can go buy some shit. I have two thousand gold. Um, turns out he was a dragon and I just you know, wasted that time, <laughs> but I can't, you know, I can't take back those actions. You saw me trade, uh, very poorly, like, I, I lost a lot of resources, i.e. health, um, to not get much out of it other than to clear the wave, and that was fine, because I was pretty confident Warwick was not literally here in this, this area here, um, and I did want to recall because I had so much money, and, like, I just needed to make sure the Teemo didn't crash another wave, so that's fine. Um, unfortunately at this stage I can't TP, because I've already used it earlier. So they just die and there's not much they can do about it. Um, at this stage I don't really have a clear plan other than I want Teemo to die, if I can make that happen. Uh, it's just kind of difficult, because I left the wave in a really bad position. The downside of making sure he couldn't crash the wave was it exposed the risk that he would just sort of freeze it, and he kind of did. Um, but because of the trades, I can't just leave the wave neutral. I want to use it to heal up, as I do. Um, but it does make it difficult for me to get this Teemo sort of low enough that I can uh, kill him without also letting him get CS, because like, at this stage, <laughs> again, even though I'm 403, he actually has a CS lead, and like, a CS lead of nearly 50%. And I once again don't know, yeah, don't know where Warwick is, I guess that's a tongue twister for me when I'm really tired. Um, so, I don't want to play this too aggressively. Suddenly we see Warwick, now I can sort of do whatever I want on the top side of the map pretty safely. But I do abandon my strategy of trying to make that happen for just a little while. Uh, get some vision in the jungle. I'm gonna steal some raptors knowing that Warwick is like around here. He could be parling this way. Um, so definitely this is a risk. But uh, Zoe's doing pretty well. Yasuo's not. Like, look at Yasuo's items. So... Uh, it would have not been too bad if a fight broke out. Even though my resources weren't that high, uh, my items would have made up that deficit, and Zoe's items would have made up that deficit. Uh, it was like a calculated risk. Anyway, back to the lane. Don't know where Teemo is, and I don't really know what's going on with this build. Um, Raptor Cloak is, in this situation, basically the oh shit, I'm under my turret and there's nothing that's going to change that build. Which, if he's most worried about me diving him, I understand where he's coming from. But my game plan here is really just to not really spend much time in top lane. You can see my TP is coming back up. I, I ping my R's ready and I ping that I'm going to have some fun in the bot lane, so my bot lane gets ready for that. Uh, unfortunately they start fighting way too early and then Ezreal just, I don't know why he does this, but he walks into MF ult and then he stays in the MF ult. 
It's not only both of these guys are sort of not really that able to fight. Um, and if they do, they're probably, well, they're not probably, but they're at risk of, of legitimately dying if they fight. So that's not great. Uh, they try to do some sort of bait here, but it doesn't go very well. Um, they push way too hard for it, with way too little health. Um, and that, basically that entire situation could have been solved. I'm just gonna pause real quick. Could have been solved if Ezreal didn't walk into the MF ult. <laughs> but he did, so... In hindsight, I probably should have told them, let's not take this fight. So that was probably a mistake on my part to not tell them that, but... Oh well, it, is, it, it happened. Uh, I'm gonna try to save Zoe. And the threshold misses, which means that we can save Zoe, and we do save Zoe. And everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Uh, Timo is crashing another wave, but that's fine because everywhere else on the map is losing, except for the fact that MF just killed the enemy bot lane. Well, our bot lane. Um, because our bot lane misplayed. Uh, so that sort of mitigates a lot of what I was going for. Um, I spent a lot of resources away from my lane to get my lane as a lead, and they didn't get a lead. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to return to lane, and I'm just going to kill the team room, and suddenly everything's great again. Uh, my gold lead is reasonable, it's not extreme. I mean, it's pretty high, 1400 is pretty high, let's, let's be honest about that, but like, it could have been higher uh, if the bot lane fight had played out the way I wanted it to, rather than the way it did. Uh, no eyes on Warwick, so... You know, I don't want to stay forever over here. Timu TPs, which was a little bit weird. There's like, not much value in stopping me from using four minions. The next wave was gonna take a little while to get there, and he knows that. He can look at his own minions and knows, oh shit, the next wave is a while away. But he doesn't, so I don't know. Uh, I want to back at this stage so that I can look to TP. But they're fighting, my team is fighting away from wards, uh, so there's not really, like, this is the best ward to TP onto. Um, it wasn't really, it didn't really look like it would pan out if I did that, so I decided to just hold the TP. Uh, especially because I didn't have my ult cooldown because I used it to kill Teemo. But I am still looking to, to see if I can get a TP out. Uh, basically I just want to clear this wave, I want to clear this wave as well, and then... We'll see what we can do. I'm gonna spot it in mid, so I know I'm pretty free to do whatever here. Um, right in the bot lane, Ezra just instantly dies. So I TP in and nothing happens. Um, in theory, I could have altered as soon as I come in and maybe, maybe reached MF, but with her strut, it is quite difficult to. Uh, really catch up to her for the first little while uh, and like land that first axe. I would have had to ult like immediately, like literally the moment I'm in uh, to negate her E slow. But in any case, I just catch her afterwards and just run her down. So that sort of negates part of the problem that we had. Uh, I'm pretty safe here because Thrush doesn't have flash, Warwick doesn't have ult. If they did, you know, I would die, but they don't, so I'm fine. Dodge that hook, no worries. Um, I'll just clear this wave and then leave. And I have some gold. Just building towards Sterex, uh, pretty usual stuff. Uh, with Zoe and Ezreal and now Soraki nearby, we can sort of start taking fights. Um, Keep working on this guitar. So I just want to clear off this last plate before I leave. Probably. Because we're not really healthy enough to realistically kill the Teemo without knowing where everyone else is on the map. See, so yeah, I'm just clearing this plates out and now I'm happy to take back gold and leave. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm gonna buy Jerome's Fist and a pickaxe. How much money is that? That's... Uh, I probably can't afford anything else. Maybe I pick up a control ward. Let's have a look. No, I pick up a ruby crystal. I have just enough money. Yeah, just enough money. 
uh, mid lane trades, I can predict the future because this is my past. Uh, what a wizard. And then I notice Timur's gone Magi's. I have no idea why he went Magi's. I. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the Raptor Cloak, I kind of understood, right? It sort of made sense. He was staying around his turret, gives him armor so he doesn't die, gives him regen so that he doesn't die to poke, and it gives him move speed so he can kite around his turret really easily and avoid both all ins and poke. But then he built Magi, so I don't know. Don't know what's up with that. It's possible that this person wasn't playing completely seriously, but yeah, I'm not sure. Right here, okay, so right here, oh, this timing was so shitty for me. Okay, so let's let's quickly talk about what, what the deal is here. So I don't have W because I just burnt it on the turret. I didn't really expect this to happen, like these two people to be here and actually want to fight me. So that's the reason I burnt the W cooldown. Um, if I had the W cooldown 100% I just demolished them, but without it I'm not 100% sure because Warwick can survive quite a while. Um, with his sustain, he also has an executioner's calling, it's like my sustain's not gonna be great even without the W. Um and I if I can avoid it, I don't wanna use my flash unless it guarantees the outcome of this fight is kills for me. If I flash away I'm you know, if I just ult and flash away, I'm probably gonna live, right? But my flash is too valuable for that in this in this situation. Um I don't wanna blow it just to not die, I want to blow it to do things that make me win the game. And if I just survive and don't die and don't get any kills, it doesn't win me the game. So I, I want to find a situation, a way out of this where I don't burn my flash cooldown. Um, oh, so I missed my axe, which means that he lives. And you see I didn't blow my flash, or maybe in that situation at the end. It would have been safer to blow my flash, but uh, risk reward I don't think was worth it. So, um, whether I played that optimally or not, just waiting for W cooldown, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't have enough experience against Warwick to understand in great detail what his sort of, uh, play pattern is in the fight. So maybe what I did was a mistake, again, I don't know, I did my best, but, yeah, maybe it was wrong. Hard to say. Our bot lane, <laughs> our bot lane sure does like walking into MF. Right there, it was so dicey, and it cost them the trade, one for one. Now it's uh, not one for one, now it's one for two, and Warwick also got a kill on Zoe. So all that time I spent bot side of the map, yeah, we're still ahead on the bot side of the map, but it's just, it didn't need to be, it didn't need to be anywhere close to even, we could have been steamrolling them across the entire map, instead they're sort of vaguely strong enough to sort of maybe consider possibly perhaps contesting us. Right. They're not even with us. <laughs> That's really clear. But they're close enough that if we keep making mistakes like that, we are at risk of not winning the game. Not necessarily of losing the game at that juncture, but not but of, of not winning it. Uh, the reason I don't go on Yasuo here is because I don't know who's around. Uh, if the rest of the team was like hanging around right behind him, it wouldn't have felt well for me. So I just hung around knowing that if he walked here, this is almost definitely not watered. And then Timo just sort of appears behind us. I don't, I don't really know why or how, but he does. And so we just, we got a free kill. And we clear his Magi stacks. And even watch the free play, I'm pretty confused about what happened. But in any case, look at this axe. There we go. Good shit. And we just run him down. Because that's what we can do. Uh, next next things we want to do. We want to clear this turret out. I, I kind of want it to run. I'm going to come with me. 
If I tank the turret. The other reason I tanked the turret is just to get attack speed, but mostly I just wanted Soraka to come with me so that she was safe. But she doesn't. That's, that's fine. Not a big deal. Um, I think coming with me was slightly slightly safer, but whatever. He also is sort of split pushing because he's not strong enough to like do anything else. <laughs> uh, if he 1v1s anyone else except maybe Mundo, maybe even Mundo would kill him. But an, an armless Mundo, maybe he has a chance. He can 1v1 Soraka. But I think anyone else he, would, he probably loses against even the Mundo. So, uh, I mean, they, they took Dragon. Uh, we can't really push this turret just yet. I need to catch this wave. The next objective is probably Rift Herald. We should probably be grouping up for that after I've cleared this wave. But you know what? Let's see what happens. And they're adding more executions callings because mostly on the boat, I guess. Uh, the side effect is it hurts me as well. And this is a wit's end game for me. Wow, new item. Oh, deviating to new strategies. Instead of building one thing that's MR, I'm building another thing that's MR. What an innovation. At this stage, I don't know exactly where people are. That's why you saw me cue the bush. Um, just for a bit of safety. I assume that if they're not in the bush, they're probably not looking to kill me in the immediate future? Yeah, in the medium term future, sure. But uh, yeah, probably okay um, in the immediate term. If I clear the wave, you know, I burn my cooldowns clearing the wave, that's fine. I just want to take this turret. Uh, and if they try to defend it in the jungle, I want to kill them for it. But taking the turret's a lot safer and a lot more reliable. So that's probably what we should be doing. Um, but then my team, like, okay, so, <laughs> I'm just gonna pause again. This looks really dumb, and in the replay it looks even worse. I thought this was bad when I played it, but in the replay it's even worse. So I saw my team was, like, posturing for a fight instead of going for the turret. I incorrectly assumed that they were still doing that without really checking. Again, Insomnia's a bitch. Um, this was not a good idea. Well, okay, it was a good idea if my team was doing what I thought they were doing. I thought they were like, you know, here, sort of, not directly behind me, but close enough that if a fight breaks out over here, I'm not going to be alone. However, I am very much alone. So, initially, I hold my ult, um, just to keep my durability up, because I'm not looking to turn. Um, my team does notice that, holy shit, Olaf is fighting, and they do come. And, you know, credit to them, they repositioned very quickly. But, uh, I think... It was a combination of our faults. I shouldn't have been there without them. But, I think they shouldn't have retreated either. Um, the timing was such that earlier we should have taken the turret, but once you've already moved down here, once you've moved away from the turret, you should probably try to find, you know, uh, something there. Okay. Where's the scoreboard gone? What do they do? What? Okay, well, it's back now. Raise the heavens, the scoreboard returns. I'm still building a wit's end. Why, pray tell, did I build a wit's end against this team comp, especially knowing that they have three <laughs> executioners and an ignite? Um. I wanted more damage, and I wanted some MR, so, oh, and I kind of would, if I could, I kind of want to sustain too, so that's why I decided to go for the wits. Um, not really sure what the play on their part here was, I think maybe they thought I wasn't 8 and 2, maybe they forgot Maybe they had Insomnia as well, so they actually forgot what was happening in the game. But they... Oh my god, this hurts to watch. My whole team just, like, taking all this damage just to kill Emma. In any case, uh, yeah, they, they couldn't kill me. I had Sterex. I had Emma and Armor, so I was fine. And right here, oh, oh. 
lads. This one hurts me. We could have ended the game right here, but Soraka decides to recall. Ezreal decides, I don't know, he's gonna push this turret? Question mark. So instead of ending the game, we don't end the game. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. We could have, we could have ended the game. I'm quite confident. Quite, quite confident. We could have ended the game if everyone came with me. Alas, poor Yorick. It doesn't, doesn't happen that way. So we're back to watching me. We're back to, oh, maybe I can finish a wit's end. What an innovative item choice. Doing something I've never done before. Good for you, MH Loppy. Thanks, thanks, loyal viewer. Yeah, good for me. Why the fuck did I want the dragon? Well, loyal viewer, the reason I wanted the dragon is because I'm gonna recall after this dragon. And because there's no objectives around that are contested by the enemy, um, it's gonna be quite a while before the next fight breaks out. And I don't have a TP, so it's not like I'm gonna TP into a fight. As you can notice, my old cooldown is already one third back. By the time I reach this part of the map, or this part of the map, it's gonna be more than halfway back, perhaps two thirds back. By the time the next fight breaks out, it's gonna be fully back, and I have a wit's end now. So once it's fully back, I'm ready to rumble. And until that time, there is no reason that I can't use my ult to take the dragon a little bit faster. But thank you for your concern, loyal viewer. Anyway, so yeah, Baron's the next thing. Um, Technically, like, let's let's just, real quick, technical macro, we should not take the Baron. Technical macro, we should take this, I think. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is technically the correct play, is to take this, let this wave stack with this wave stack. Um, so, that, well, not take this, but like, they're pressured along this point. Follow my cursor, they're pressured along this line here, then take the Baron. But, it, like, we're talking a 95% play against a 96% play. In one way, one is better than the other by 20%, but realistically, one play, because it's like 96 versus 95, right? The difference is 4% wrong versus 5% wrong, or 4% risk, 5% risk, whatever you want to call the, like, the bad percentage. But it's 1% difference if you look at it the other way, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I've never seen that done before, but we killed the shroom before it detonated, after he popped it onto us. And then we just, we win the game. Now, uh, MF has decided that her nexus is less important than the side wave. Um, I think you'll agree that's not the correct play, but, I mean, they're so far behind, I don't know what they could have done to, to defend against that once we had Baron. Um, their best play was probably to suicide contest the Baron, which has less than a 5% chance of working, but defending their base against the Baron team had maybe a 2% chance of working. So, again, you got to play the odds a little bit. But yeah, this game was really a lot about roaming, and it's really boring to talk about that while nothing's happening, so maybe let's just like rewind a little bit. I'm just gonna spam backspace here. That way there's something on the screen for you to look at while we're just winning the game a second time. The audio is gonna be really messed up, but you know, you'll live. Um, so when is it a good time to roam as Olaf so early into the game? Well, as you saw in the last horde, if you're watching them back to back, which you're probably not, but maybe you should. Um, like, it, it makes a lot more coherent sense if, if we do, or if you do. I'm sorry, I'm tired. I have insomnia. I'm gonna backspace a little bit more. Um, if the if your lane opponent has really bad pushing, and Teemo does, pre sinks Teemo can only auto attack. He doesn't have any AoE abilities, um, and he doesn't have a high enough attack speed. He doesn't have runons, he doesn't have, well, he can't build a TM at, but, you know, he doesn't have anything that will clear out the wave quickly. And Warwick, I'm not 100% sure, like, I don't play Warwick, but I'm, I think Warwick has, like, a health equilibrium based on his kit and based on his healing where he'll stay if he stays in the jungle too long like he will stay at a certain amount of health like a certain percentage of health maybe like i don't know somewhere between 30 and 60 percent health so when i invaded him i was very very confident warwick would be less than full health because my 
And again, I don't play Warwick, so like this is just an educated guess. But I think uh, Warwick is always like a, at least a little bit low in jungle. So stacked wave against this turret, which you'll have to use your imagination. Pretend there's a turret here. Pretend there's Teemo here. Pretend there's a stacked minion wave. Uh, Teemo has to then choose between helping jungle, which will take him like 10 seconds to you know walk down. Uh, in the meantime, jungle might already be dead. Or he can real slowly clear out the wave. And he he got the worst of both worlds, essentially. He did actually come to help Warwick, but Warwick died. And Yasuo died. <laughs> and he didn't catch much of the wave. So, when's the good time to roam? The most important thing is actually, just make sure that when you roam, there are chances for you to do something. Like, don't just... Don't just autopilot room. Uh, you need to actually examine the situation and, and like understand if you have a chance of, of impacting the rest of the map. Um, always default, in my opinion, this is um, an opinion held by the best Pantheon player over in NA. Always default to um, staying in the lane, staying in your own lane, getting your own CS. Um, because this is, if you do this, this is the least risk, right? If you stay in lane, you get all the CS, you get all the XP, and you also deny your opponent a little bit of CS and XP just because you're stronger than them in lane, because you're Olaf, they're, in this case, Teemo, but against most other champions it works the same way. You can lower their income and lower their experience gain just because you're stronger than they are. Doing this is really safe, it's really reliable, it's very unlikely to fail. If you roam, there's always a risk that what you're gaining on your roam is lower than what you could have done if you, like what you could have gotten if you did nothing, if you made no change, if you just stayed in your lane. So my recommendation is always default to staying in the lane, but then if you see a good chance, if you see a good opportunity, you know, be ready for it. Um, try to look into the future to see if you think a good opportunity will be coming and then you can use your TP uh, or you can just walk around after pushing the wave especially early you can walk around quite easily uh, just keep an eye on you know how much XP you're losing and always try to think about the trade-offs but yeah this game was won in the first like 10 minutes well, not like not what like decided in the first ten minutes, but like I I gave my team a huge advantage by just roaming really heavily early into the game. So that's something you can do, something you can think about doing in in your games as well. There's me only two vods for today. Uh, maybe I'll see you next week in the next one. Uh, maybe I'll have really crappy insomnia and not be able to do anything with my life a week from now. Let's find out in a week. <laughs>